Hello, welcome to the Criterion HCM payroll webinar. Last week we presented the Criterion HCM HR part of the solution, and if you'd like to see a recording of that, please contact your BAS representative and they can connect you. Today we'll start off with a brief PowerPoint to cover the general functionality of the payroll system, and then after that we're going to go through the software focusing on the payroll aspects. This will include some configuration capabilities as well as some time collection and payroll processing. Along the way, we'll point out some of the other aspects of the system, but feel free to type in any questions you may have, and at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll get to as many as possible. So here's where, how we're going to walk through this today. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about BAS and Criterion. Criterion has is a software publisher. We've been making HR and payroll software for about 35 years now, and everything you see here today is our product. We develop and program everything. And then we enhance our software about every two months, bringing out about oh, 20 new features You know that clients ask for as part of our feature enhancement portal. And Bass is our reseller partner, and we work together to market, sell, implement, and support Bass clients needing a robust, configurable HCM solution. So, a little bit more about the system is that the HCM that you're going to see today is a SaaS delivered or in the cloud solution that is a single database system. That simply means that if someone makes a change to an employee record, whether that's an admin or an employee or a manager, um, you know, things like adding banking information or job code information, it is immediately available by the programs that need it, payroll or HR or timekeeping. There is no updating that has to be done behind the systems. Now, there can be approval processes uh, for each of these changes, and we call them workflows, and you'll hear me talk about them when we get into the presentation of the software. Just so you know that you know each of these workflows are configurable based on your requirements. So we'll go through the overview, then we'll go into a little bit from the admin perspective, and then we'll talk about time collection, because there's a variety of ways to get time into the system. So a lot of options there. And then we'll process a real quick payroll, show you a few of the reporting capabilities, and then when there's uh, time available at the end, we'll take some questions. So please feel free to use the chat box to submit any questions. As I mentioned before, HR and what we refer to as talent engagement were discussed last week. And again, you can get a link to those um, that presentation by contacting your BAS rep. But today, when we talk about payroll, we're going to really focus on first of all the system. You know, just a over, general overview of its its look, its feel, its in, in navigation, and so forth. Hopefully, you come away with this from this presentation that it's you know, it's flexible, it's easy to navigate. You can, people can move in and out, whether you're an admin or, or um, uh, an employee or a manager. Uh, and then it's an open architecture. We can talk about the different things around integrating and sending information or receiving information from other systems if there's time, but it is in a very secure environment. And we'll talk about that briefly when we go to the next slide um, after this. So, first of all, Within Criterion, you have the ability to manage multiple entities or multiple companies so that you can set these up to track uh, employees that are working one or move between companies or work for multiple companies all in the same database, which allows you to get reporting either across you know, those different entities or strictly by one. We'll also talk a little bit about labor distribution when we get into the software, because this really digs into some of the things that you can do as far as tracking for time, but then also co costing that information. 
when you're going to take it from payroll and put it into your general ledger. We do integrate with a variety of different general ledger systems or financial packages that, that can you know, be discussed at a later time. From a tax calculation perspective, there is taxable and non-taxable wages so that you can have incomes or pays that are relatable to be taxed uh, on everything. So you could also have, you know, that would be federal, provincial, CPP, or QPP, you know, all calculated. Or then you can have incomes that are only CPP or, or no tax at all. So it really just depends on what your requirements are, you know, for those individuals in the, their pays. We'll also talk about rate calculations, and we'll show you a little bit of this when we get into the software around different things around unions, overtimes, what we call shift premiums, and so forth. And all these can be done, you know, configurably, and you'll see some of this as we get into it when we go into the software. And of course, all the electronic reporting that you would need as well. So this is a 100% RESTful API solution. And simply what that means to take away from this conversation is every piece of data that you want to track in our software can come from another system directly into it through an API. So the data is pulled from one database and populates our database. And it can be vice versa so that if there's data that we are holding that needs to be sent to another system, that can be done through an API as well. We call these apps, and there's a, several of them that we've built. There's also several that Bass has built as well. We do customizations. If there's certain things that an individual client needs, we can work with you to bring those into the product as well. As far as ERP systems, there's a bunch of them. I just listed a couple up there. And then, of course, we do single sign-on, too. Critical thing that this is your employee's information, so our role is to keep it as secure as possible. And we do that through a variety of, of, of steps. First of all, we use what is called pod architecture. And that simply means limiting a small number of clients to a pod. S segmenting small number of clients into pod limits if there is a you know potential breach to a small group of, of companies and not have it spread throughout the entire client database. In addition, within that pod, we segment your data away from everybody else's in a separate database schema. So your database is never incorporated into another client's data. And then we encrypt that data even at rest so that even if there were an, a breach attempt to access data, that data is basically scrambled, garbled, whatever you want to call it, even if it's sitting there not being used. Those, it can only be used once it hits our system and those keys unencrypt that data and it's used for you to display. Now those keys are refreshed every 90 days. So there's pods, database segmentation, and then encryption. And we do this all with our partner called Amazon Web Services or AWS. For our clients in Canada, that means we use Amazon Web Services uh, Center in Montreal and backup site outside of Toronto. So your data never leaves Canada. In addition, Amazon backs this data up for you continually for 30 days so that if we ever do need to recover your database, we can go back to a specific day and a specific time and restore that data. Now, subsequent weekly backups are stored on site for as long as you're a client, and you can request those backups at any time as well. Keep in mind that this data, your data, 
is your data. So if you choose at some point to leave us, you get all your data back, whether that's you know three years from now, 10 years from now, or whatever that might be. And there's no charge to get your data back. We also are constantly doing security checks, penetration testing as well. We're also looking at load balancing and statistics to make sure the system is operating at, at optimal levels. And that's where Amazon is also key in this because they can spin up additional servers for us, you know, as, as they see things spike for usage. So that's a little bit about Criterion and the product in general, along with some, you know, additional information in terms of security around the system. So we'll spend the rest of the time now in the software and walk through a good number of different pieces of it so that you can walk away with a sense of, you know, the, the robustness of this solution. So we are going to start from an admin perspective. And we're going to start over here where we have dashboards. Now, I will tell you, first of all, that there is security. You know, we talked about the security at the database level, but there's also security within the system. We do not define roles for you as in terms of admins and managers and employees. Those you can define yourselves with BAS assistance in terms of what people can do in the software through their security profile. Are they allowed to access the admin portion of the so software? If so, can they view all employees or only certain groups? If they can go into this group of employees, can they see everything? Can they edit anything? Can they delete anything? All of those are options that you have in setting up and more uh, in the security profiles. So you can have people do admin functions, but have them, you know, be very scoped very narrow, narrowly so that you can decide what they can and cannot do. But everybody that has a, is an admin can also have a dashboard, and there's different key performance indicators, which are the, what these tiles are. And then each admin can have their own look and feel, just depending on what those tiles are that are relevant to them. To start off, though, we're going to go into what we refer to as the settings. One of the key things about the Criterion solution is the fact that Anything that Bass and Criterion do as far as configuration is all um, available to you as well. We do not hide anything that requires you to come to Bass to say, hey, I need to add a custom field or I need to do this other function. You can do all of these things yourselves. Now, it's up to you if you choose to or not, and there, that's another conversation. Uh, conversation for another time but the fact that we are open allows you to feel confident that you can take this system and make it yours as we go in you'll see all the different functionalities that we have today we're going to focus on payroll administration and when we open this up there's going to be a few things I do want to touch on just to show you the capability of the system now, within HR, there are things called employee groups, and employee groups just define different, you know, employees. They could be employees by location, or they could be hourly versus salaried. They could be by skill sets, any variety of different things, and I could belong to multiple employee groups. In order for them to get paid, you just group them all together in what we refer to as a pay group. So if I have, you know, salaried people and hourly people as my two pay uh, employee groups, I can combine them to make them a single pay group. I can also set the schedules. You know, if I have biweekly, semi-monthly, weekly, monthly, whatever those schedules are, I can define those. And then they continue to roll over and roll over and, and so forth. Now you'll see things like shift rates. Well, these are important because these define, you know, these uh, shift premiums. We'll just take a look at one real quick. You know that it, between the hours of 3.30 and 11.30, there is going to be a premium Monday, 
you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it impacts this particular group or it could be multiple groups. All right. So you'll have that flexibility in defining when those premiums come into play. You also have the ability to define the union, if you work with unions, the rate tables. And if you have multiple locals, that's fine. We can define any number of different tables. When we open this up, you'll notice there's a variety of different things that can be done. But down here in the meat of it, if you will, and this grid really shows you what can happen here. Because as we look at this, this is a position code which relates to a job classification. So as an electrician, okay, I'm going to be paid a certain base rate. You know, there's certain insurance that the company pays on me per hour worked. Okay, there's also pension plan deductions that as an employee can I contribute to and the employer contributes to as well based on the hours worked and then there's also union dues and so forth and this can go on and on and on it can also be used to add fringes into that as well then I can associate this with a particular location so I'm working in or I've got a particular uh, local in Toronto but I've also got one in Montreal. There's different rates, there's different classifications and so forth. That's quite all right. With different tables defined for different locations is easy enough. I do also have some, one other thing that I do want to show, and that is the ability to configure time. We're going to go into this in just a little bit, but the ability to decide how you're going to collect time can be different across your entire organization. For example, these timesheet layouts reflect the ability to go in there and determine, first of all, how we're going to collect time. And I'm just going to bring one up just to give you an indication of how these work because we're going to look at it here in, in just a couple minutes when we get into um, the uh, employee side of things. So here you'll notice that I have the timesheet layout, and it can be vertical or horizontal. Think of it as the days going down the left-hand side or the days going across the top. You know, vertical is down the side, horizontal is across the top. You can also decide whether people clock in, you know, you know, ins and outs, or whether they're simply using it for um, total hours worked in a particular uh, time or day. And then you'll also see things like, you know, being able to um, configure breaks, meals, and things of that nature as well. Okay, and then you can add all sorts of different fields, additional fields that you may wish to collect in, in getting more granular information around the timesheet. There's other things that you can do. You can come in here and you can, you know, decide that, well, we want to collect this person's work assignment. We can call it something other than work assignment. We could call it job class or something like that. Work location, we could change all that. You'll notice as we get into this, the flexibility of renaming fields is very important to make things look like you want to see them and your employees know it'll be familiar. We can also set, set up geofencing based on work locations as well that we can talk about too. But here's the thing, you can have multiple time sheet layout details configured for do different employee groups. So you'll see here where I've got these three employee groups, but I could have something totally different for others. We also do the same thing. I'll just show you real briefly, and then we'll get into a couple more pieces, and I'll show you how all this works together. But then we have overtime. So overtime rules can be defaulted to something, or we can have different locations have different overtime rules or there again we could have different um, uh, 
rules go to different employee groups. So flexibility is there to define what happens. The other piece that I want to show you as far as administratively are from employees, and we're just going to pick this fella right here, that I'm going to go into employment first. And you'll notice under employment, he has work locations. And that means that he could work at one or more locations that we've defined in the system. If he, if he can, then he's allowed to move between those locations, or it could be, if you allow him to, to select those different locations where he's logging his time in. He can also have his primary position or his role, his job classification. This would tie back to a union table if I would look for a position called admin SUP and there was a premium rate set up for that. It would pay this employee for any time he worked at a project or at a location, you know, using that local table. You know, it would define that rate of pay as well as all the fringes and deductions for any of those hours worked automatically. So if he were to work for two different locals in the same time period or pay period, it would determine, the, you know, the, the right calculations on the hourly rates as well as the fringes and deductions. However, you could have people that work in multiple positions. So sometimes he is an admin support person, sometimes he is a business system analyst, and those could be two different pay rates, and that's also acceptable. We'll track history here, but then the last piece is that I need to be able to decide how I want this person's time to be allocated on an ongoing basis. So I could come in here and I could simply choose one or multiple things and i could say you know we'll just do this grant fund a b and we'll do child care and these could be related to general ledgers accounts they could be related to cost centers or other items but i could then just simply say that ryan's time is going to be allocated or his cost is going to be allocated to this particular grant fund starting here okay and um come in here and i could also say that this one is it starts on this date and then i could decide whether or not i want to come in here and automatically allocate the 20 percent here okay and if i want to add a automatically allocate the balance to that other account. So I've done all this. I don't have to do anything more. The allocation will be done when we process payroll. Okay, the only other piece here to show you right here in their employee record is about payroll. So taxes are set up. Keep in mind that Criterion maintains the tax tables for both U.S. and Canada, all provincial, federal, provincial taxes in Canada, and all the federal, state, and local taxes in the U.S. automatically for you. You don't have to go and update anything. As the tax rates change, we provide that update uh, immediately. As soon as it's, it's available, we'll, we'll date stamp it. So if it goes into effect, say, March 1, you know, then you don't have to worry about it. It's done. Okay. The way the system works, though, is that you'll notice that Ryan has no taxes, you know, allocated set up. Now, he or an admin can come in here and the forms are already there to, to add, you know, the federal as well as provincial taxes. And then he could simply come in or you as an administrator could come in putting in the claim amounts and the effective date and so forth. I'm not going to set up any taxes because I want you to show, show you how the system works with Ryan, even though he doesn't have any tax um, claim uh, amounts set up. 
He can have multiple incomes, anything from regular and overtime, you know, or salaried. But he can also have, you know, bonus. He could have mileage. And any, anything that you need to pay him in his check could show up under his income. And deductions work the same way. Deductions could be simply, you know, the the benefit if he's, you know, paying a share of that benefit. But then also, um, it could it could be that he has a garnishment or multiple garnishments, and we'll go through and do those garnishment allocations as well. And he can have bank accounts. He can set up, or you can for him set up multiple bank accounts. So you can come in here and you can decide, or or Ryan can decide percentage or an amount to go in one account, then a percentage to go in the next account, and then the balance to go into a third account, et cetera, et cetera. You can have any number of these set up for them, or they can set up any number if you choose to let them. So the, the flexibility is there for you to do all that information here from an admin perspective, or it can be done you know, in the employee section, which I'm gonna show you right now. So as I come over to Ryan, I'm just going to open up a different browser, and there is Ryan. He's ready to sign in. This is your login page for your version of the Criterion HCM solution, your photo, your logo, and you'll see all this information right here to log in. Notice that he can recover his password on his own. It doesn't require someone to be an admin to keep track of that. There's all sorts of different security um, measures you can take on passwords from, you know, number of characters to special characters, capital letters, lowercase letters, so forth. When he logs in, he has this landing page or home page. And if you want to get into detail about this, uh, I, I can tell you the easiest thing to do is watch last week's webinar on HR because we talked about this quite a bit. But what I am going to do is talk a little bit about Ryan's timesheet here. So first of all, though, let's just go down to the bank, pay. And you'll notice you remember over here that Ryan doesn't have any tax information here. But he could come in here and he could add those just like the admin did. He could also add his checking account and so forth. But we're going to go to timesheets. And when I go into timesheets, I'm going to bring up his timesheet for this pay period. Now, Ryan can log his time in simply by entering his time, you know, clicking on a cell, opening up a day, and typing in time right here. Okay, and he could come in and say it's 7, and I, I left at 3 p.m. And you'll notice over here that he can move between different locations. He can move between different areas in that location. That one doesn't have any, but here's different locations that are tied there's areas tied to locations, so it's a layering effect, right, or parent-child. He could move between that admin and that business systems. He can work in different departments. He could use different equipment. He can make comments and so forth. Now, he can do that here, you know, on a laptop or on a PC or something like this. Great for folks that are working in the office. Okay, he could also do the same information at a stationary clock device where he could use a badge or something like that. And then he could make all these changes as well from a clock too. And then we'll also talk about how he can do that on his phone in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna come in here and I am actually going to submit this timesheet. And you'll notice here it goes into submission. Now, what his manager or that workflow is going to decide is, you know, um, who gets alerted to the fact that Ryan has submitted his timesheet. And that can be an email or SMS text to tell that next person in line that Ryan has submitted his sheet. But what I forgot to do, and so I'm going to recall this timesheet because I was going to show you something else. So I'm going to recall this timesheet and bring it back because I forgot it to add something. And what I wanted to add was to show you how he can come in here and look at his time offs and decide that he's got Friday, or here's his balances for vacation and sick, 
if he wants to, he can look at a calendar and you'll notice that these little colored dots would represent when he has you know, taken those times. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to request some time off first. So I'm going to add some time off. I'm going to take some sick time because that's I've got some balance there. And I'm going to take this for Friday all day, although I could take partial days. And so then I can come in here and I can simply submit it. Now, you'll notice here it's been saved. It's in submission just like that timesheet was done earlier. Now there, again, that workflow comes into play because that workflow is going to let that person, that manager know that they actually have a timesheet of uh, open, or excuse me, a, a, an approval that needs to be done. I had one done somewhat similarly. I got an email that said, okay, John Jameson did, you know, requested time off, and I can simply click here. And it's going to take me to my manager self-service where I can go ahead and approve those time offs. Under my tasks, and we'll see time off requests. So I can come in here and I see that Ryan Adams too. So I can easily come in here and view Ryan's time information about his time off request, even his notes and so forth. I can approve it. And then if I return over to Ryan and simply refresh, Ryan got an email that said, or an SMS that said, hey, your time off's been approved. So when I go to my timesheet, you'll notice my hours increased to 44. And it inserted the vacation time, or excuse me, the sick time. Now I'm ready to submit the timesheet. So I submit the timesheet, and the same process occurs again. My manager is actually going to get under the timesheet submission request or timesheet submissions, they will have you know Ryan's timesheet. However, there's a bunch of other things that a manager could do in terms of processing time. One of those things is he can just come in or she can come in and look at the entire team's timesheets. So here's a way that I can bring up everybody in this particular pay period that I'm responsible for reviewing, and it would bring everybody up. Okay, notice I can come down here, I can sort this if I want to. There's Ryan right there. So his is in submission mode. I can review his timesheet. You'll notice there's others that have time but haven't submitted. Okay, I can come in here and I can review this timesheet and I can do other things if I need to. I can add notes and so forth, you know, and, and on and on. I get that same information that uh, Brian submitted, all the detail. I could reject it and, and have him redo it because there's something amiss with it. However, if I come down here and look at the total hours, I can come in here and just simply say, hey, I'm just gonna take everybody and approve everybody. And then I don't have to go one, one by one to approve, okay? I can also import time. If you don't have our time collection system, that's fine. You could import time from a third party system. You could also do team re time reporting as well, so that if you know a manager wants to clock everybody in or clock everybody out, they can do that. Or they can say, I want these six people to be clocked in at this time, these other seven people to be clocked in some other time, and so forth. I even have the ability over here to put this in a grid form where some clients require the ability for uh, you know an admin role to just come in here and heads down start entering people's time because these are field people they're out and you know they're they're going to turn in you know some sort of handwritten sheet 
Well, I can come in here and I can just simply come in here and and, and do all this in, in, uh, information right through here as well. So all these things I can do, different ways I can do this, these functions. But we're going to come back out to home. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do timesheet, submission. There's Ryan's individual one. I can bring it up. I can open it up so it's a little bit bigger to look at. And I'm just going to approve this right here. And it'll simply advance me to the next one and the next one. But now I am ready to pay. So I'm going to come over here and move into administration again and do payroll. The first part of payroll is to create a batch. So I'm going to add a batch. Ordinarily, you know, I, I can pick from any number of different employers. Okay, I can give this a, a name. And then I can pick a pay group. So I would go in and pick everybody that I wanted to pay just by, you know, picking a pay group. In this particular example, we're just going to pay this one individual. So I'm going to come over and bring this in. Find this one employee here. and then import. Now I have the opportunity to not only load timesheets directly here from our system, but as well as other timekeeping systems, but I could import incomes or deductions. So I've had people on production lines that are getting paid bonuses based on productions, units or something like that that come from a spreadsheet. I could do that as well. So I'm gonna bring in those 16 valid records here. And then I'm going to calculate. And when I calculate, it's going to do all the gross pay taxes and deductions. But I can look at the detail here. And when I look at the detail, you'll notice a few things. Number one, at the bottom, it shows employee paid taxes and deductions and the same thing for company. Notice here it also has some union pension as well as you know the insurance plan that he has selected. All right, I can also open these up to look at how these hours were distributed because all that detail is coming across from those timesheets that we that Ryan had entered in as well as you know the overtime and you'll see the regular time down here broken up by the different jobs that he holds system analyst as well as support specialist the location area you know if you know quite frankly i don't want to see all this information i could simply remove the columns that i don't want to see and i don't have to deal with looking at them so that's that's fine if you don't want to look at this detail as you're processing payroll so I can either do other things like gross up, so I can add incomes into this run and so forth. But right now, I'm just going to simply come in here, look at this batch to approve it, and then I'll move into pay processing. So when I move to pay processing, I'm going to simply come down here and grab uh, Ryan's. And you'll notice it gives me all those same totals I just saw earlier in the approval process. So now I have the ability to come in here and I can generate the EFT or print checks because Ryan has no banking information on hand. I need to print him a check. Check formats, if you still do them, come in a variety of different ways, but you'll get the idea of what's going on here real quick. I'm going to blow this up a little bit so you can see this a little better. But you'll notice here, again, it gives them the breakout of adjustments, overtime, regular pay, all his taxes, his benefits, and so forth, as well as the company paid benefits. 
and then you'll see his balances and notice that it even showed that he took that eight hours of sick this pay period as well. So then I'm going to complete this batch by pressing complete batch and it is ready for the general ledger. And what we can do and help you with is create this file, this payroll journal that can be either created as a CSV file as shown here or we can even do this and then take the next step and transmit it directly to your general ledger. So, a couple things though. Along the way, regardless of where you are in the payroll process, you can run reports. So just to give you an idea of some of these reports, we can come in here and we can run, you know, like say pay date totals, All right? You'll see as this opens up, there's a dialog box that opens. You can run this across your entire organization or any organizations that you have. You can do it by pay date. You can do a custom range. You can see the different options you have here. We're going to keep it by pay date and we're going to run it on that payroll that we just did. Notice here that you could also run it based on a payroll schedule. So if you just wanted to see the weekly payroll versus the bi-weekly payroll, or if you wanted to only see the impact on one particular work location, you could do it that way as well. So then it just comes up and generates this report showing the different incomes as, as well as the different deductions, the employee paid, the employer paid, and so forth. And here are your totals down at the bottom. I'll just blow this up a little bit so you can see a little better. The cool thing about this though, is you wanna see it in Excel, you can just flip it to an Excel spreadsheet. You can also save the options as how you've done this before by memorizing it. You can also set up these reports, any report in the system to run automatically and be sent to specific people or specific groups of people throughout the system. There's other reports. You can see all the different types of reports that you can run here and all these different things like even this nice little piece right here, which is a total compensation report. If you just wanted it to run, you know, and distribute it out to employees, you could do this as well, which gives you a breakdown of each individual. I'll blow this up again here. So Ann Baldwin and the breakout of all her different benefits as, as well as her compensation and so forth. If you don't like the format of this, these things are always customizable as well. In addition, there is around taxes. Uh, you can see all the different tax reports that you can run. And then we can get down here as far as tax filing information, you know, generating T4s at the end of the year, as well as going in and generating ROEs. And you can generate them individually, or you can uh, generate a group of ROEs. You can download that file, you can edit that file, and then transmit the file as well. So, if we come back over to Ryan, this is Ryan again. So, we're just going to come back over real quick. So, we'll just update this. Now, a couple different things have happened. Since we last uh, were looking at Ryan, number one, you could see where his vacation day was plugged in for him. Okay, but now he can also come over here and look at his pay history. And when it looks at that pay history, this is current year, so he can see his activity for the entire year and how it's broken out as far as pay and taxes and deductions. All right, but if he needs to look at a particular pay date, he can get that information. And then you'll notice here that he can download this in a PDF, which looks exactly like that check that we, uh, uh, pay slip that we just saw earlier, so that if he needs to, he can do this, you know, and take this to the bank or leasing office or whatever he might want to do. One last little piece here, though, is the fact that I can come in here and I can do this all on a phone. So if I want to enter time in on a timesheet, I can do that, all right? If I need to enter in for my group, all right? If I want to see my payslip information, I can simply drill in here and I can look at that on my phone. I can also download a PDF as well, all right? I can request time off and so forth. And then all those things that I needed to approve over in the, in the 
uh, PC look or the uh, laptop look, I can do all right here as well. All those time off requests, all those timesheet submissions, I can do for my phone as a manager as well. So that's what I'd hope to cover today. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Uh, if we have any questions, Remington, I'm happy to take them. I do have a few questions here. Um, so the first one I have is, is our data kept in Canada? It is. It's maintained in a site in Montreal through our partner Amazon Web Services, and there is a backup site in Toronto that we use. The next question I have is, our administrator pays are split over various departments with the same ratio each pay. Can this be done automatically? Yes, we have those tasks that we can set up, and they can de determine the percentages, and then those percentages can change or they can they can uh, go away, you know, expire based on dates as well. Okay, the next question I have is, do you provide tax table updates? Yes, we take care of all of that, so there's no need to worry about any type of new tax information coming down, we will update that as soon as it's available. Can you handle vacation pay outs based on percentage in lieu and other exception pays? Absolutely. So, you know, the, if, if, if the client needs to have, you know, the, some hourly people paid out in percentage, then we can do that as part of their regular pay. And that can be, you know, increasing based on, on length of service with the company. We can also, or in, the, in as well, offer, you know, putting it into a compensation bucket like in lieu, and they can draw down that in lieu bucket if they choose to as well. And we also do the, the standard look back for uh, stat holidays to make sure we're paying those hourly people at the proper uh, amounts for the stat holidays. Do you have a scheduling module? Yes, we do. Yes, yeah, so the, the scheduling, which is uh, one of the options up here you'll see right here, is an advanced scheduling tool. And then we also have the standard scheduling. So the difference would be, just real briefly, if I work 9 to 5 every week, Monday through Friday, that's a standard schedule. You know, if it rarely changes, then that's the thing for me to, you know, we call it a work period. However, if my schedule will fluctuate over time based on certain conditions, then our advanced scheduling tool uh, would apply because that way you can set it up to rotate my schedule. Maybe I work, you know, one week I work, you know, first shift and then next week I work second shift and then I work every other weekend. Those require the, the scheduling module. The last question I have here is, can you calculate both taxable and non-taxable pays and make sure they go into the proper box on the T4? Absolutely. So every kind of uh, pay income can be d defined whether or not it is taxable or not. And when we define taxable, it could be federally taxed uh, or not. Okay, it could have CPP attached to it or not. Okay, or neither of those apply. Okay, if, if somebody is tax exempt, like a First Nations um, member, then it goes into a, I think it's box 46 on a T4, and we associate every income with a particular box within the T4, so we know it's going to land in the right box when they uh, generate T4s at the end of the year. Okay, with that being all of the questions that have come in, I would just like to thank everyone for taking time out of their busy schedules, as well as you, Steve, for presenting today. I hope that everyone found something beneficial in today's webinar, and you will be sent out a recording of the webinar um, in an email. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.